How's it guys? Welcome to Reptile Garden. In this video we're going to be covering this unit here, which is the SHT2000. It's a really awesome unit. Um, what it does is it can control temperature as well as humidity. So you can increase both or you can have it that the unit will decrease. In other words, for cooling and dehumidifying or for heating and humidifying the air. So we're going to take a closer look at this unit. Um, nice and close, I'll tell you all about it. We're going to look at wiring up this unit as well and then different ways in which you can actually make use of this with your cages and your reptiles and so on. Okay, so here's just a closer look at the unit, the front face. These side orange clips are nice for mounting this device. So you can just push on here to take this out. You'll cut a little box into your either enclosure or container or something where you want to mount this device. And these clips can lock in place nicely. So you, all you've got is that beautiful front display. You can make it look really smart. Okay, you've got your little back cover here, which you want to unclip. Okay, now what I have noticed with this device is that it's only got three wires, whereas other devices that I've wired up have got four. So obviously one of these is just like a control wire, whereas the other one needs four. And then here's your sensor for your temperature and humidity meat picking it up and everything. So this unit is obviously going to be in the enclosure where you want to monitor your temperatures and humidity and so on. So you get a couple different devices. We're obviously covering this one, which is AC 110 to AC 220. Okay, so it's our full current here in South Africa. And then you have the DC 12 and DC 24 volt. Okay. So we're going to get into the wiring of it soon. I just want to cover some things about it. Okay, so with this unit on the relay, the relay is 10 amps. So that means you can put about 1,200 watts of power, so either your heating or your humidifying, which is plenty unless you're using it for like um, heating a room or something. Your heat device is really massive, but for enclosures, these are absolutely perfect. And the accuracy of is of the temperature is within 0.3 and with the humidity it's around 3%. So that's a really good device. So we're going to get into the wiring of this unit. It can be quite a lot of fun for those of you who have wired up things like this, the STC 1000s and ringers and so on. It's pretty much similar, you just got an extra bridge you have to add, but we'll cover that in this next clip. Okay, so we want to start wiring up this device. So the first thing you want to do is just open up all the connection points with these little screws here. I just want to get them all nice and open so we can get those wires in there nice and neatly. Okay, it's very important to make sure when you're wiring up these devices that you get the wires really neat and securely in these spots and that they do not touch each other. Like obviously live and neutral touching each other is going to spark and trip your house so, or cause a fire if your wiring's not right. So it's very, very important to make sure you get the wires in there nice and snugly. Okay, so... You can see we've opened them all up nicely. Now obviously again this unit has got this wires that's clipped in here. Your other wires you'll have to put them in color coordinated but it, the other ones will show you and it says blue, red, green, yellow or whichever. So, so that's quite simple. <clears throat> okay so first thing we want to do is we want to get our power cable. Alright and then normally with your power cable, you're going to have your neutral is brown, uh, sorry, your live is brown and neutral will be blue. Okay, so a lot of the time with these units, it doesn't really matter which one you're supplying it in. You see it doesn't say live or neutral, but um, I always sort of, these always kind of tend to stick with putting 
live in at one. Okay, so you want to make sure that the wire is nicely in there. You can use solder as well on the end of the wire, but I find if the solder is too hard, these connectors don't actually squash it down nicely and they can actually be yanked out. So if you are soldering, you want to use a very, very soft solder. Okay, and we are going to be covering two different ways of wiring up these units because they can be fairly complicated. So I'm just going to show you a very nice, neat way of doing it now. Okay, so that's live and neutral to power the unit itself. All right, nice and easy. And then what we're going to do, we're going to get some other wires quickly. Okay, so now we want to connect the wire for the heating. Okay, so say this way it is now going to the heat device and the plug power supply is coming from this side. So what you want to do is bear the wires like this. Okay, and then just take the live again, which would be brown. Obviously everything's unplugged, otherwise this would be a shocking experience. <laughs> And we just want to bear these ends. So this is obviously now going to break the circuit. Okay, just give them a little twist. And then fold them over in half. Just to make a nice bit of meat. Just like that. Okay, same for this side. A nice twist and fold it over. All right, so then these points we're going to be fitting into the heating. Okay, so this is a broken circuit now, and as you can see, the relay is always open, so that works pretty much like a switch. Okay, and this is obviously a thermostat, it's like an automated switch with all picking up the temperature and controlling it and so on. So we're going to stick that one in there, which is Power out at number 10. All right, and then power coming in number nine. Okay, so obviously this way it's getting power from the plug to the heat device and we're just breaking the live circuit which is going through the thermostat. Okay, so then again, we want to do the same thing for the humidity now. So. Okay, so now we've done the same with the wire for the humidifier. So we're going to pop those in quickly. Just make sure it's nice and secure. There we go. So the nice way to, this is a really safe and nice way of doing it, especially if you also got a three core wire with an earth, because then your earth is also going to your heat device and whatever, so if anything does happen, then you know your earth can be triggered off as well, which is a very, very safe way of doing it. So each thing has got a plug, so you've got a power supplying the unit over here, and then you have supplying power to the humidifier and supplying power to the heating. Okay. Well, so there's the humidifier and there's the heating. Yeah, like that. All right. So this is a nice safe way of doing it, but you are taking up three plug points. So I can show you another way we're going to wire it quickly, which is just involved using a bridge where you can use just one power lead to power supply the unit as well as all your heating and your humidity controllers but obviously depending on how much you're powering you want to use proper cables and wire and things like that so another way of wiring this up what you can do is obviously here's your power supply from the wall you can use your plug you'll see that there's a little L and N live and neutral so you know where to plug what in if you want to keep track of everything and this wire is just twin flex 
and you'll notice that with twin flex there's one side that's actually got a little bit of a rim on it where the other side is smooth so it's quite easy to track where the live wire is i always use the little rim side for live so i know where i am with all my wiring so we want to just strip the ends about a centimeter like that okay and then on the live we want to add a bridge okay so we're going to bridge it with this little short piece of white wire so we're just going to twist these together again soldering is good but if your solder is too hard as these devices don't really clamp down on it too well the electrical fittings and they can actually pop out so a lot of the time i just put them in like this and i've never had a problem and if you do want to use solder go with quite a soft solder okay so just like that okay so we're gonna fit it quickly the other side the neutral just give it a twist and fold it over okay so it's like half a centimeter or so okay so then at number one we're going in with a live that's bridged make sure it's all the way in there tighten it up nicely because you don't want these wires touching each other they're very very close to one another okay and then your neutral I'm getting a little confused with the neutral you actually want to connect okay so say this is going to go to our heating device you also want to link the neutral it's been a while since I've actually done one of these okay so I'm gonna bridge that Okay, so then that is supplying neutral to the heat device. Okay. Let's get that in there nice and firmly. Okay, so now we are going to obviously run into a problem because we've got to get neutral for the humidifier as well okay. and I'll show you another way of doing that you don't want to try and put three wires into one of these holes it's near impossible okay. so now here we've got our bridge so we're going to bridge this one to the first one it doesn't actually matter heating or whichever because they both need a power but what we need to do is add a, another bridge to the little bridge, okay? I know this can get confusing, but if you've got a video to follow along, it should be all right. Okay, I'm gonna clip that off like about half a centimeter. Okay. And then we're going to pop this in at number seven. Okay, there we go, nice and neat. And then the bridge is going to go over to number nine. Just want to fold that over because it's a bit long give it some more meat okay pop it in there and give it a nice tightening okay so this one here we said it's going to be our heating so heating is number 10 okay so remember it's getting neutral from there and then the live bridged, bridged again, going through the switch, the relay. And through to the heat device. Okay, so our heating is connected. Now we need to grab another 
piece of wire. So now this is where we might run into a little bit of trouble. So as I say, fitting a neutral or three neutrals into one spot here is near impossible. It becomes very, very unsafe. So what you can also do, this is the same principle with the live as well, is you can just follow this neutral wire. Okay. You want to just take the plastic coating off. Just bear it a little bit like that. Okay. We've got our neutral bared as well. And this I would definitely solder on. Okay. So it's just a, it's exactly the same sort of principle of bridging. It's just another nice easy way of doing it. Yeah, so you can just do it like that. And what you can do is you can either have heat shrink that you put on and pull over and you can heat shrink it so that it's protected or just take some insulation tape and go over it very well. Okay, you don't want to use just one layer of insulation tape. I would go nothing less than three, three layers over. Okay, and then we're going to pair this wire. Also again, it's about a centimeter. Fold that over, and that is going to go at number eight, because this is powering the humidifier. Okay. All right. So there we have it. I see I've actually got some insulation tape here handy. Okay. Just gonna pull this down a little bit. And we're gonna go over that. Make it nice and safe. Okay, I am doing a little bit of a rush job. I don't want this video taking up too much time. And it gets very boring as well. Okay, but anyway, you guys get the idea. I would obviously do a nice, neat job of that. Okay, so then just a quick recap. You wanna see what you are looking at. Okay, so here's, this is power in. Okay, so power in at one, and it is bridged over to seven, and then bridged again over to 10. Uh, sorry to nine okay and then your neutral is connected here comes in here connected to your heating and then your power continue to your heating and then this other little connection we made over here so that's your neutral to your humidifier and then power out from all the bridges to the humidifier. Okay, so as I said, it's a little more of a messy job, but it does the trick, and as long as you make sure the wiring is all nice and neat inside there, you won't have any problems. All right. What I've also done in the past, if you're worried about these coming out a little bit and actually touching each other because you see I didn't push this one in all the way you can still see a bit of the copper you don't want to really see any copper sticking out here so if the neutral came out a little bit and then that starts touching it's going to start arcing so you want to make sure that is in a little bit better but as I say I'm just struggling with the camera and looking at what I'm doing as well and then what I, you can do is take a glue gun and just squirt some hot glue in there that will keep it secure and also insulate it so that there's no chance of them touching. I just like to do that as uh, extra safety. Cool, so that's that. And then uh, what we'll do is get to the programming of this device. Okay, so let's uh, get on with the settings of this device. Okay, so if we wanna start with the temperature, 
what you want to do firstly by pushing the arrow you can see what it is set to okay so the starting temperature is a 20.7 and the end temperature is 22 obviously we haven't set anything here and then the same with the humidity you can see starting temp uh, starting humidity is 55 ending 61 okay so you can see current humidity in the room is 68 it's quite high so we obviously gonna have to set that higher if we want to see this device working so let's get to the settings so to set the device you want to hold the button down for three seconds till the number starts flashing okay and then we're going to set our starting temperature let's just do say 29.5 that's a good temperature for quite a lot of animals as a basking spot or whatever okay and then our stop temperature also hold that down till it's flashing and then we're going to set this one to 30 degrees so now it's going to play within that five degree margin that we're given see okay there's a light that's just come on for the heating and you can see the little indicator light showing that there is applying heat to the device so same with humidity once it comes on okay so we're going to change the humidity quick okay wait till it's flashing and we're going to set this up let's do like 75 or something because it's we've got to ramp it up quite high here at least these digits go nice and fast you can also push any other thing to save it see they're saved in okay now we're going to change we want our humidity to stop okay once it's flashing let's get this up to 70 let's do 80 hey? okay so again you can push something if you want it to save but it'll save automatically pretty quickly anyway all right so now the unit is set you can see starting temperature 29.5 ending at 30 and humidity starting at 75 ending at 80. now if you obviously want to do cooling you would set your starting temperature below your heating um below sorry your starting temperature lower than your stop in this sense so we obviously said for heating we're going to keep it like this otherwise if you're doing it differently you would set it so all right then if you find that you have some device that's more accurate at measuring and you actually want to calibrate this unit these units are very accurate to start with but what you can do is if you hold the two temperature buttons together which are these top two Hold them together for about three seconds and see it says zero zero and then this will allow you to set a calibration which you can sure it just seems to keep going eventually it should jump over again to zero so it goes all the way up to 50 and doesn't jump down okay so that's just if you're finding your temperature reading from your probe is not quite accurate as some other device you've got and you see this unit's like three or four degrees out then you can set it to four degrees out plus or minus so on okay but obviously we want to keep this on zero because this device is working just fine okay so we're going to go back to zero obviously you can go minus as well okay so then again same thing for the humidity you can change that as well all right Cool, so that's pretty much the settings sorted. And then we can see how this unit runs quickly. Right, so we're gonna test this unit quickly. As you can see by the display, the heat indicator light and humidity indicator light are on, which means that it's obviously trying to get the humidity and temperature right. Okay, so, what we're going to do first is we're going to just check the temperature we're going to make sure that's turning off at 30 so we're just holding it by this bulb over here you might also notice the humidity might start to drop as it gets warmer obviously it's drying out okay i think that should do it there we go okay so you see the light has gone off 
temperature is working just fine. Now we want to get the humidity. So I'm just going to hold it here in the fog that's coming down from the humidifier. You'll see it's slowly, steadily climbing. And it should be going off at 80. Okay. There we go. Okay, so the device is working perfect. So as you can see, the sensor probe is extremely large. Now getting this into certain enclosures might be a bit of a problem. Obviously you got some big brands like Exoterra in that it has spaces for wires where you can open the whole lid and then the wire will go through. But if you've got say a wooden enclosure or something like that, that is a big hole you need, would need to make. So what you can do is either here at the back of the device, you can pull that little white box off, it comes undone. Or if your one doesn't have that, you can just obviously thread the wires through the hole of the enclosure. And then there is also inside here the same little clip. So you can just actually unclip that. Okay. Now, if you ever see this showing, you know there's something wrong with the probe or sensor. Maybe it's come undone. So just putting that back in place and everything will be 100% again. Or there could be a break in the wire or something like that or something's faulty in the device but okay so that's a nice easy way just to get that inside your enclosure or so on okay so then we just want to get it back in its housing all right okay just like that nice and easy cool so now a good uh, way to use these device the devices because it has only got one temperature setting and one humidity setting okay there's no day night setting with these units you can only set your sort of ambient temperature and humidity so if you've got some another thermostat that's controlling your heat device you could always use a unit like this to control your ambient air temperature and your humidity which is quite cool so, you know, if you just have this in the middle of the cage somewhere and then you have like a heat emitter just to ramp up the air temperature a little bit, especially say in winter, it's very cold and you just want to get it to like 25 or something. You don't ever want to go below that. A unit like this is great because you can set that 25 degrees, keep the ambient air temperature just right or what have you, and also the humidity. And then obviously if you want peaks in humidity, then you'll just go through with misting or if you've got a misting system that can up your humidity and then your humidity will drop and be maintained by this unit. So there's a lot of things you can do with playing around and using different devices and things. So these ones are really, really nice. It's just a pity that you don't have a day night temperature setting with these. Most people will use one standard temperature setting and humidity a lot of the time. Cool, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful, really really great device and if you have not uh, liked and subscribed please give us a like, please subscribe, we'll get a lot more content out soon.